Hello, hello. Welcome to Mexico. My name is Ashley and I drive a 2023 Toyota Tacoma and I have a plan to go completely around the world by land and cargo. Today I'm very excited to share with you my overland setup. In this video I will go over everything that I've done to the build, suspension, the camper, a little bit about the solar, the beautiful bed replacement, and I will touch a little bit on some of the most asked questions, weight, payload, why not a full-size truck, and I think that covers it. If you're wondering, yes, this is a volcano. Yes, it is active. So moving on, as I mentioned, it is a 2023 Toyota Tacoma. It is the SR5, access cab, six foot bed. I still do not have a name for this truck. Um, I don't want to get too deep into things, but everybody has a how and why they travel. Why I travel has a great deal to do with my dad who passed away roughly eight years ago. So I'm bouncing between two names, Mighty Taco or Macho Taco. It will be MT in honor of my dad. That was his nickname. So please, if you have a vote, please comment whether you would like it to be Mighty or Macho Taco. Hey bud. For those of you who are not familiar with these campers, the top pops up about three feet. The standing room is six feet. This section is like the master bed. <laughs> it slides out to a king size bed. There's a twin size couch that's actually like a U shape. It's super comfortable. I really love it. I will be doing a full video on the inside of the camper, everything I've done to make it better for Porter and I. My favorite part of the camper is obviously these stripes painted by yours truly. Absolute nightmare, painting is the worst. But after three attempts of painting, I think I got it pretty well. I'm not gonna lie. It did come with solar. Um, everything is mounted on the inside, center, forward, where you want all the weight to be. There are two panels on the roof. They're the flexible panels, so less weight. The truck is wired to the solar system. So it charges both off of the solar and if the truck is running, it will charge the system. The truck does not have to be driving, which is excellent. So on days like today where it's very cloudy, the panels are not really doing much work. I can just turn the truck on and it will charge the system. And it actually charges <laughs> really fast, which is super great. If you have any solar questions, comments, or concerns, I highly, highly recommend KP out of Reno, Nevada. This is where you can contact him. He... For those of you who are not familiar with who I am, I have traveled full time for the last four years. So all of my gear, clothes, hygiene, photography gear, dive gear, everything that I have is 110 pounds. Weight is a major factor for this journey. As most people know, the Toyota Tacoma has a very low payload. So weight has been top priority every step of this build. Before I had the camper or the bed replacement, I completely emptied the truck, not even a piece of gum in the truck, got a curb weight. I weighed it once the camper was installed. I weighed it once my gear was installed. I weighed it once the suspension was installed. I weighed it once the bed replacement was installed with all of our gear, full tank and gas, porter, myself, 18 gallons of water. And I'm very, very happy with the weight distribution. It's about 55%, 45%. I would like it a little bit like 60, 40, but I'll take it. I did get the truck tuned with the Overland Torque Tune by Josh out of Sac Sacramento, California. This is his Instagram, highly, highly recommend, especially carrying all this extra weight. The tune was essential at this point. Um, Josh actually works for Stellar Built and this is what they did to the truck. All right, all right, I'm gonna keep this very simple. What you see here is Josh removing all of the original suspension for the truck. The entire process is very straightforward, out with the old, in with the new. However, deciding what type of suspension setup your truck is going to be running is not so simple and straightforward. There are many different setups on the market, all great for their own reasons, 
So I really leaned into the experts on this matter. Rob, absolute legend, wealth of information, went over all of the different options on the market, pros, cons, but took a lot of time to drill down the countries I would be traveling to, the type of off-roading I would be doing, and the constant load the truck will have. Weighing all of the options, the absolute best setup for this truck and adventure is going to be Dobinson's IMS. What you see here is Josh and Luke putting together the leaf spring package. Once they installed it and lowered the truck to the ground, it wasn't sitting quite how they wanted it to be. So they went ahead and installed the Dobinson at a leaf package, which is absolutely amazing for this truck build. This Adelief kit now puts the suspension at a constant load of 1,450 pounds. Porter was the shop supervisor of the day. He did a great job. As I mentioned, this suspension setup is now rated to hold 1,450 pounds constantly. The entire camper and my gear is less than 1300 pounds. So I feel very happy with that. We also removed the tiny stock bumps and replaced them with these sumo bump stabs, which is really great. It provides a lot of extra cushion and comfort when we are off-roading. At the end of the day, I truly wanted a suspension setup that was set it and forget it. And Dobinson's is 100% achieving all of those goals leading me to the next install which is the Dobinson snorkel i was both very excited and nervous for this because alexander was drilling holes into my truck and taking out pieces of metal that i will never get back but after talking to a lot of overlanders and listening to every single episode of the overland journal podcast snorkels are something you don't need them until you need them and if you don't have one you're absolutely screwed so i'm quite happy to have it installed and very much looking forward to crossing some rivers right. i cannot thank stellar build enough for upgrading everything so porter and i can navigate around the world very safely if you have any suspension questions comments concerns i highly highly recommend reaching out to stellar these guys are absolutely incredible. They don't just wrench Monday through Thursday. They wheel on the weekends. They use and know every single thing they sell and install very, very well. Especially as a woman, I never once felt like these guys were trying to oversell me on anything. They answered all of my questions every single time, took the time to explain everything. And <laughs> I, I just, I cannot recommend them enough. They do specialize in Toyota, but they can obviously install suspension on any vehicle, rock crawlers, overland vehicles, obviously, or just if you want to upgrade your regular everyday suspension, definitely reach out to them. This is their Instagram here. <laughs> so I want to thank Rob from Stellar for just being a wealth of information, taking the time to answer all of my questions. but to truly understand what I was doing, where I was going, the constant weight that I'm gonna be loaded with so that Josh and Luke could install the perfect suspension setup for myself to go around the world. To a thank you to Alexander for installing this snorkel in record time, by the way. And obviously a big thank you to Josh and Luke for installing the suspension and an extra thank you to Josh for tuning my truck, not once, but twice when we needed it to be a little bit more spicy. All right, let's move on to a couple of other changes to the truck. This grill is one of my favorite changes to the truck. I love having Toyota spelled out. It just feels classic Toyota to me. I got this grill from Taco Vinyl highly recommend excellent quality if you buy some of these aftermarket grills they will be loose like this one is super secure super fast shipping brandon actually even facetimed with me to explain the installation process because toyota is actually wired to the battery this lights up 
which I think would be super great for me to do some night photography, to have Toyota illuminating with the Milky Way. And obviously, most importantly, this adds at least 25 horsepower to the truck. I joke. <laughs> oh my God. Anyways, this feels like a great segue into the most asked question. Why not a full-size truck? Why a mid-size truck? I am one person traveling with a medium-sized dog. I simply do not need a full-size truck. I am five feet, five inches. So I really enjoy the fact that I can stand on land and reach all of the clips for the camper. I do not need a step stool to do any of that stuff. Porter is also almost 12 years old. He can easily jump in and out of the truck. If we had something a little bit bigger, I think it would be a lot harder on Porter's hips and his legs long term. And we want to keep him around for as long as possible. So this works for us. It's super comfortable. It's easy to drive in. I personally just feel comfortable and confident driving it. The truck is 17 feet long, which means I can go anywhere a regular vehicle can go. I can park in the parking lot at Walmart. I don't have to park a mile away. I can drive through small towns. I have no problem going downtown in parallel parking. It fits and I think that's great. Number two, personally for me, as you can see, I prefer to be wild camping off grid. This truck is not a pavement princess. We are always searching out four wheel drive trails only to get off grid away from people and there are many trails that I have gone down that are not well maintained and I just could not imagine getting through them with a full size truck. Almost every trail that I've been down lately there's just no way a full size truck would have fit. There's the logistics of traveling in a full size truck versus a mid size truck. You have height weight and length that you need to really consider where you are going what you are doing every single country that you go into you need to do a temporary import permit and those come with rules and regulations for example mexico where we are right now if your truck is over 7,700 pounds you will be denied a temporary import permit which means you cannot enter the country now, of course, not every single border agent is going to deny. Some of them don't care. They don't get paid enough to care, but it is a factor. It is real. It is a rule and you can be denied entry at the border. I prefer the seven P's, which is prior proper planning prevents piss poor performance. My dad really raised me on that. So I like to do as much as I can ahead of time, plan, and hopefully everything goes as smooth as possible. I do not want to be 20,000 miles into my journey and be denied at the border. Of course, you can go, you can try again, but it's not a guarantee that you're gonna get through. I'd rather do everything I need to do on my end to make things smoother. I don't wanna have to be driving back up, backtracking, or finding a shipping company to go around a country. I just don't wanna do any of that mess which leads me to shipping. Once I get to the end of South America, I'm going to ship the truck in a container to Africa. So 17 feet, seven feet, three inches tall. This can fit into a shipping container very well. I can even split the shipping container with another traveler. The containers are usually 40 feet long. So I would have 17 feet, the other traveler would have 23 feet which is super great we can both split cost okay lastly why toyota why not ford chevy dodge something that is also a mid-sized truck lighter weight there are only two true international auto brands in the entire world mercedes and toyota toyota is extremely reliable and it's international. I can go to any single country in the entire world and there will be a Toyota dealership. Also, I have traveled full time for four years now. Every country that I've been to, Toyota is a very present brand. Meaning if I'm out in the middle of nowhere and something breaks, the person that's working at the local auto shop will most likely be able to help sort the truck out. And that is very important for me. 
reliability equals safety to me traveling alone as a solo female I want to have that it's very important to me all right let's move on to the best part just quickly want to go over how the process works so if you are considering one you have a better understanding brent owns bowen customs they have an engineer on staff every single bed is engineered custom to your truck and to your camper every piece of aluminum is laser cut it is then sent to the shop where the world's best welders ryan and kyle weld every piece to perfection it is then sent to powder coating comes back they install all the hardware the locks the cables as you can see on the other side the fuel is relocated you then go you have your stock truck bed removed they install the truck bed with your wiring your lights your backup cam your sensors all of that great stuff and then make sure everything lines up and then they bolt it down install it I don't think I showed you this on the other side. For mine specifically, I have turnbuckles. So sorry about my dirty laundry. There are four access doors to get to the turnbuckles. And Brent is absolutely incredible being that I am living in this camper full time. This camper is not coming off. We don't even own camper jacks. I really wanted the camper to be bolted down. So Brent, and his amazing team found a way to create some brackets. So the camper has four brackets. It is bolted down through the bed plus the four turnbuckles. It just makes me feel extra safe and secure as I travel around the world. 10 out of 10 recommend. It has exceeded every dream, hope, expectation that I had for this camper bed. And honestly, I cannot take this thing anywhere. <laughs> I swear every time I park i should start recording video because i go to the gas station and guys are feeling the perfect welds around this box i went to the atm a couple days ago three guys were guarding my truck when really they were just admiring every single inch of this beautiful piece of art even driving down the freeway <laughs> there's a guy 85 miles an hour windows down screaming just how badass this truck is and he is 100 percent correct this is incredibly badass and I absolutely love it. Money well spent. All that money I saved on not buying a full size truck, I got this. I would like to share with you a few of the factors that led me to buy the camper bed versus the flat bed for personal and logistical reasons because as with everything in off-roading and overlanding, everything comes with pros and cons. So logistically, center of gravity, the camper bed keeps it as stock as possible. It is not raised at all. I don't want my center of gravity to be any higher than it already is. I don't want to feel any more top heavy than I already am. If you go with the flatbed option, it will raise your center of gravity about six inches. Personally, for me, I do not want to be up to my tits trying to get in and out of my camper. Also, for Porter, it would be a very difficult task for him to get in and out. And we want to save his hips and keep him as healthy as possible for the rest of his journey. Um, pros, cons, flatbed, slide in. If you have a flatbed, you obviously have a flatbed camper, which gives you more space inside. That means putting everything that's outside inside. And I just don't want my camper full of all of that stuff. I want everything that is going to be dirty to be stored on the outside. Yes, the flatbed, can, the flatbed does come with lower storage boxes, but it doesn't even compare to these uppers. As you can see, there are two uppers, two lowers. I spent a lot of time mentally prepping and planning where to place everything in the truck. There are two buttons. You just press them. Everything opens very easily. Each cabinet has these wires. They are all attached by a little clip that you can remove. So if you want these to be flush and lowered, you can easily remove them, hook them back up. The weight limit I think is 150 pounds per door. Not gonna test that. Each latch does have a lock. 
if you would like to lock them. I don't really lock anything because I'm just really bad. I don't even lock the camper. I do want to say a big thank you to Brent, his entire team, Ryan and Kyle for all the beautiful welding. Thank you, Eric, Adam, Riley, Eli for installing this. Thank you for all of your help outside of the install, answering all my questions. Of course, thank you to Stellar and Bowen for letting me film the entire process, for allowing Porter to roam around your shops. I really, really appreciate it. I can't thank these guys enough like <laughs> I'm getting a little emotional but like it's just incredible men doing incredible things producing products that they truly care about and that's not something you find all the time especially as a woman so it's just like <sighs> I'm so grateful if you have a vote please comment whether you would like it to be mighty or macho taco hey bud Okay, that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you taking the time. And yeah, hopefully you can follow our journey around the world. See you later. Yes! <laughs> Have fun. Thank you. Thank you, Marty. Appreciate the business.